Hello fellow mutants, welcome back to another video, and in this video we're going to talk about, uh, the, uh, the cancelled Spider-Man 4 movie. There was going to be a Spider-Man 4 that Sam Raimi was going to do. It was going to be a continuation of the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, but, um, that got canned due to how poorly received, uh, Spider-Man 3 was. At least from what I've heard. But, um... As you guys may know, Tobey Maguire Wires, no, um, was the very first Spider-Man for me that really captured my interest in the character. Um, I've seen all, oh, technically all the Spider-Man movies that had come out in theaters in the years. So I've seen the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movie. I've seen the uh, Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. I've seen the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies, even the Into the Spider-Verse. I've seen that too, and um, have to say I en essentially enjoyed each one. Sure, there was like some Spider movie, Spider-Man movies are stronger than others. Like um, I have to admit, kind of circlingly this somewhat back to a uh, um, um, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man a bit. Cause that's the main focus. Spider-Man Three is my favorite, even though I really acknowledge that Spider-Man One and Two are stronger, and Number Two is the best of that Spider-Man trilogy. But Spider-Man Three is my favorite, just cause <laughs> Evo Spy Peter dancing. That uh, that's my favorite. <laughs> I will die on that hill saying that Spider-Man Three is my favorite favorite, just cause of that dancing scene. Same reason why the. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze, is my favorite Ninja Turtle movie. Guess we see the turtles dancing. <laughs> if not, I will admit that the first one is significantly better. <laughs> but I, I'd be damned if I did admit that uh, Secret of the Ooze is my favorite Ninja Turtle movie because of the Ninja Turtle dancing. Yeah, destroy me all you guys want. That, I'm dying that on that hill. <laughs> Getting back to Star uh, Ninja Turtles, let's read this article. Sam Raimi unrealized plans for Spider-Man 4 are promising. Instead of tra treading the same path as most superhero movies of the time and drawing a clear line between fact and fiction, Sam Raimi brought new life to the big screen superhero adaptation by spinning Spider-Man's Fantastical yarn into realistic, relatable stories. When Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker at his four, Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy highlights the coming of age ebbs and flows of a teenage hero who endures the lonely pursuit of keeping his neighborhood safe. After the success of Raimi's Spider-Man 1 and 2, the third installment had relatively mixed reviews. Um, this Despite the decline in critical ratings, its box office numbers convinced Sony to greenlight another, with Raimi again at its helm. Though it would set the tone for future MCU movies, as web of issues kept holding it back, and Spider-Man 4 never happened. Since McGuire's cameo in No Way Home, Spider-Man No Way Home, Raimi's trilogy garnered a new wave of popularity with his unfinished plans for Spider-Man 4 surfacing. Uh, the director ideas are not only in sync with the elements that made his original trilogy great, but are scalable enough to a kickstart more. The latest news for Spider-Man 4. Sam Raimi confessed that his love for the characters have hasn't hasn't diminished for a toy it Ota, but would only revisit the trilogy if it, provi it provides plausible answers for some nagging questions, such as, does Toby want to do it? Is there an emotional arc for him? Is there a great conflict for his char for this character? And are there a, a worthy feeling that fits into the theme of the piece? MCU's multiverse saga changed all of that. The director has also admitted that even though he did not think it was gonna, it was previously possible, the news 
new movie have, have given him hope, and he is open to directing a new Spider-Man installment. Christian Dunst has been optimistic about their franchise future and claimed it would be a no-brainer to return for a future Spider-Man film as Mary Jane. While well, Sam Raimi and Christian Dunst are also are open to recreating the trilogy magic of Spider-Man 4, Tobey Maguire has, was quieter about it. However, his return to Spider-Man No Way Home so he appreciate the role. In the new book, Spider-Man No Way Home, the official movie special, Tobey Maguire talked about playing Spider-Man and delivered some great news for fans. He said he would be willing to return and do anything Marvel wanted him to do. And this is why, exactly why he said, I love these films and love all of the different series. If these guys called me and said, would you show up tonight to hang out and goof around? Or would you show up to, to do this movie or read a scene or do a Spider-Man thing? I'll be like, be, it would be a yes! Because why wouldn't I, I want to do that? And I'm happy. I mean, like it, this article said, No Way Home uh, kind of showed the willingness of Tobey Maguire coming back to the uh, to be Spider Man. And not only, not only uh, Tobey Maguire, but Andrew Garfield as well. That I feel like those. Um, that had like that movie showed that the two Spider-Man that came before Tom Holland has still some interest in coming back. Maybe as to like a Spider-Man Four and then Amazing Spider-Man Three. Who knows? Anyways, on top of Dunst and McGuire, actor J.K. Simmons also touched on his fan favorite Spider-Man role. Before McGuire made his return as Spider-Man in Spider-Man No Way Home, Simmons jumped into the MCU first. It started with his cameo at the end of Spider-Man Far From Home. He then returned to the next movie, although it was really a different version of J. Jonah Jameson. He did say in recent interviews that Sam Raimi, if Sam Raimi called him for a Spider-Man 4, he would do anything that Sam Raimi... Raimi same uh, the, 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 that he would do anything that Sam Raimi approached me with. So now we're getting, going to the part where it says Spider-Man Four is not confirmed. On multiple occasions, Sam Raimi t has talked about how he had to compromise with Spider-Man Three script after he was forced to add Venom as Spider-Man's nemesis. And that makes sense, kind of, um, too. Because Phenom and Eddie Brock was only in there for around 30 minutes. Give or take. And about, like... Maybe a little bit under halfway. Half of... Toughest Grace's uh, appearance as Eddie Brock was he Phenom. And they never got, like, said, Hey, this is Phenom! And, um, I do remember people, uh, um, passing the film saying they didn't say Venom and they didn't have Venom saying we, like how he usually does. So, like, or even Black Suit Spider Man saying we a few times. So, I can with this knowledge of, um, Sam Raimi being forced to bring in Phenom as a Spider-Man 3 nemesis, I can understand, better understand why Phenom was underused in Spider-Man 3. Even though, I wish he was used a bit better, but that's just me. I, but I can understand at the very least now. Uh, so to ensure he does not make the same mistake twice, he wanted... Re one redemption for Spider-Man 4 by ending the franchise on a high note. So, Spider-Man 4 was supposed to be the end. I'll be up to see uh, that. I mean, I really enjoyed Spider-Man 1, 
Spider-Man 2 was the best. I enjoyed Spider-Man 3. That's my personal favorite, even though I'll admit that is the weakest out of the Spidey trilogy. But, like I said, I, I, uh, I enjoyed Sam Raimi's take on uh, Spider-Man, and I would be hope for him to uh, finish out his vision by making Spider-Man 4. I know this is a slightly bit different situation I'm going to bring up, but if Zack Snyder was able to, like, do, like, uh, have, like, the ex finish his vision for the first Justice League movie, and again, I know that's a somewhat different situation because he had a death in the family and which is why he had to back away, I would love to see Sam Raimi get, do that, like, I, um, get it, his finishing fulfilled, if that makes sense. Like, um, I, I think Sam Raimi deserves it. I think Sam Raimi deserves it. And No Way Home definitely sparked up that interest a bit more with, um, seeing a potential Tobey Maguire return in the future, I think. Anywho. Unfortunately, to his dismay, the filming production reached a cr crucial deadline, but he was not satisfied with the end project of the script. To avoid repeating Spider-Man 3's fate, Sam Raimi stepped away from Spider-Man 4 while Sony went ahead of, with An Andrew Garfield's alternate Spider-Man storyline, being the amazing Spider-Man. So, Spider-Man 4 release date. After uh, Tobey Maguire showed up in Spider-Man No Way Home, it proved that fans still love the original Spider-Man movie actor. Duh! That's a no-brainer, duh! It's like saying, um... Like, um... Michael Keaton. It, that it proved that, uh, uh... With his cameo in the Flash movie, that... People still love the, uh, um, his version, Michael Keaton's version of the Batman. Oh, duh! <laughs> Guys, no matter how cheesy or whatever his movies could get, his Batman, his portrayal as the Batman was, is still beloved to the stage of, like, I know I'm. I just, that might not be the best example to go off of, or comparison. But hey, like I said, if Adam West, people still love Adam West. Not Adam West, even though people still love Adam West too. But um, Michael Keaton's a uh, Batman, and it, and it, it's getting him a chance to come back as Batman in the Flash movie. Tobey Maguire showing up as No Way Home with Angel Garfield? Hell yeah! <laughs> That's like a no-brainer. Of course, more love to Angel, uh, Tobey Maguire than Angel Garfield, sure, but still. That's like a no-brainer. <laughs> Anywho. Uh, the first is an obvious landing spot, although he, the one that would include Maguire is in a life action role. Oh, so there's two, uh, ways. Okay, two ways Tobin could return. Okay. And the first one is, uh, that new Spider-Man movie that's coming out, uh, later this year. Across the Spider-Verse. Which is rumored to not only include, uh, Maguire's Spider-Man, but also Andrew Garfield's version as well. I mean... I wouldn't be surprised. Guess even in the trailer we saw like multiple different persons. As my screen went black for a second, I do apologize. But in case of the sound fumbled, I'm not just like having McGuire and Garfield's versions of Spider Man being uh cross the spire first. I'm not surprised because they did showcase like multiple different versions of Spider-Man. So, like, if we do get a Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, which we got a reference to in the Into the Spider-Verse, 
movie. And if we get uh, uh, Amazing Spider-Man, oh, and Gar Garfield Spider-Man into the movie, then I wouldn't be surprised. I would be all for it. I would be interested in seeing how Garfield's Garfield would react to Spider Gwen. Cause we saw in the uh, um No Way at Home that he was still carrying the death of Gwen in that movie. It's especially when he uh saved uh, um um MJ. We saw that he got a little bit emotional. So it'd be interesting to see Andrew Garfield Spider Man meaning Haley Steinfeld's Gwen Stacy. Keep going. Continuing, I should say. This is a realistic, realistic possibility since the trailers have already shown that there will be several versions of Spider Man showing up in the Miles Morales animated movie. However, there's also a new rumor that Tobey Maguire's Spider Man could pop up in the MCU again. Which is, which would be for Avengers Sequel Wars. For fans unfamiliar with the comics, this is if this is an event that sees all the different Earths destroyed by one by one. In the end there is one combined Earth ruled over by Doctor Doom and ML Gems of heroes exist in this world. Seeing Tom Holland's Spider Man interact with Mark Wires again will be interesting, especially if in this strange new world. This could also show more of why the this particular Spider-Man was so grateful and give a glimpse of what happened to his world. I mean, it could, but at the same time, the reason why his cameo uh, and um, Andrew Garfield's cameo in uh, No Way Home was so great and I feel like so impactful because even though we already knew um, that both men were going to reprise their roles as their versions of Peter Parker in the film, we didn't exactly know how. And even though we knew, it was still somewhat of a surprise for people like me. Because I can tell you, when Andrew Garfield came up onto the screen and said, <laughs> Yes. But when uh, uh, Tommy McGuire came out, I was one of the loudest people ever. Like, yes! Yes! I admittedly did it out. I admittedly did it out. I think No Way Home was the, uh, um, I, uh, Jesse and Spider-Man's cameo was the, Time since like Endgame. And I mean this in like what it, movies in general, where I nerded out the most. Anywho, my point was I I nerded out seeing uh Tobey Maguire and Spider Man No Way Home, but I don't think they could ha land the same way. Exactly twice with the MCU. That's my point. Um, but I could be wrong. So here is what the Spider-Man forecast would have been. Tobey Maguire will, re of course, been repricing his role as Peter Parker. Christian Dustus, Mary Jane, J.K. Simmons as J.T. Jameson, and Bryce Dallas Howard as Gwen Stacy. But also, John McCovick was going to play uh, Vulture, which I heard. Some rumors that the guy that we saw riding the glider at towards the beginning of the first Spider-Man movie was supposed to be Adrian Toomes, who is, um, Fulcher. And then, Dylan Baker's w would be playing Dr. Kirk Connors, the Lizard. Um, and Fulcher and the Lizard were going to be the primary Spider-Man 4 villains. And we we're going to also have Anne Hathaway as a uh, um, Catwoman. I mean, Black Cat. Which makes that much more sense of why we saw Anne Hathaway. 
has um Catwoman and um and um what in um Dark Knight Races. And so yeah, I uh okay. And then we were gonna get James Cromwell as George Stacy, um Elizabeth Elizabeth Beth Banks as Betty Brand and Bill Nunn as Robbie Robertson. But my point was, I think, yeah, it makes sense to kind of why Anne Hathaway was also a uh, Catwoman in, uh, um, in uh, The Dark Knight Rises, too, if that's the case. Because maybe, I don't know. And this is just me guessing. Maybe, like, Sam Raimi suggested to Anne Hathaway that she should try out for Catwoman. Or, uh, uh, ask compensation for, like, Spider-Man for to be canned. Or maybe, like, uh, Sony recommended that role to, uh, for, uh, Anne Hathaway to Christopher Nolan. Who knows? But, I really enjoyed, um, Anne Hathaway as Catwoman. So, I think she would have nailed it as Black Cat, because... Essentially, Black Cat and Catwoman act similarly. And I think that uh, Anne Hathaway would have nailed that. I really do think so. But here's the story details for Spider-Man 4. Although Spider-Man 4's exact storyline is unknown, the bones of the premise can be guessed based on bits and pieces of information made available over the years. Since it's a sequel to Spider-Man 3, the movie probably gave Spider-Man's or Parker's torrid relationship with Mary Jane a break after everything they went through in the preceding film. At the same time, the web slinger superhero must also be grieving the death of his best friend Harry Osborn. Since Spider-Man 2 and 3 briefly highlighted Dr. Kurt Connors' relationship with Peter Parker, Spider-Man 4 would have focused more on his transformation into the Lizard and his motivations for hating Spider-Man. That would have been a pretty badass uh, uh, story arc for a uh, Lizard. While initial rumors suggest that Anne Hathaway's character, Felicia Hardy, would become Fulcher's partner in crime, the Fulcheress. However, Sam Raimi later dismissed these rumors and confirmed that Hathaway's Hardy would team up with Spider-Man as Black Cat. The, uh, was I've also heard rumors, I remember back when I first got canned, that, um, Sandman, Flip Marco, was going to come back, and he was going to be an ally to, uh, um, Peter Parker as well. However, uh, da -da -da, the surrounding, uh, the teaser surrounding Fulcher's attacking an attacking his arc are still under the covers. However, his costume design and backstory suggest that he was likely written as one of Spider-Man's most ruthless enemies. Official concept art from Spider-Man 4 also featured classic antagonists such as Mysterio, Rhino, and Shocker. However, given the Vulture and the Lizard were the primary villains, the others were likely scripted as secondary characters. The creators of Spider-Man 4 had also officialized a cinematic battle between uh, Spider-Man and Vulture, which most likely kills the superhero. However, with a twist of fate, Spider-Man would have eventually gained an upper hand by snapping part of Vulture's wing, taking Vulture down as a cue. Spider-Man 4's second half was also supposed to introduce Tomb's daughter as Vulture, who could have later set the stage for Spider-Man 5. According to rumors, Angelina Jolie was considered for Vulture, but Spider-Man 4 production never reached that point. And, um... That's interesting. Again, I think... I, I really dig the whole lizard thing. Especially since they did so how close... Peter and, um... Kurt Connors was. So that could have, like, really hit the uh, emotional vibes. And seeing uh, and, um, Tommy McGuire in No Way Home does 
spark up the question, could Spider-Man 4 be um, a thing? I think if they are to set it, like, right after the offense, or shortly after the offense of Spider-Man 3, I think they would probably be better to go about it the animated route. The CGI route. But if they're going to do, like, uh, the actual actors coming back physically, then I would have to say maybe have it say, like, maybe, like, have, like, Peter already, like, um... Still, like, the sting of losing Harry might still be with him. But maybe at this point, Mary Jane and Peter are back together. And now they are in that stage of life where they're, like, there's no more of that, uh, tween early adulthood issues. Um, that we saw in, like, Spider-Man 2 and 3. Um... Maybe you end up off with them having a kid. Um. Who knows? My point is, like, if they're going to do, like, right shortly after the events of Spider-Man 3, then have it be animated. So they can have an easier time doing that. And still cap- and have, like, captured more of the youthfulness of... Tommy McGuire and uh, Christian Dunst without having to CGI that throughout the movie and it doing a poor job at it, like how they did a horrible job at re de aging um um Anakin Skywalker in the Kenobi show. But um In terms of like would I be up to see um um a Spider Man four with Tobey Maguire? Yes, like I said, he will always be the Spider Man for me. As long as this like serves as a conclusion, like from what I'm guessing, Sam Raimi wanted. I'm game for that. I'm really game for that. I would be, I would so love to see that. And same with um, I would like. Uh, I also like to see Amazing Spider-Man 3 essentially be the end of the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. And I think both versions, if we're going to get Spider-Man 4 and Amazing Spider-Man 3, and I know we didn't really talk about with Andrew Garfield Spider-Man in this, but I'm going to bring him in my final point. I think if we're going to get a Spider-Man 4 and Amazing Spider-Man 3, then both movies should serve as a conclusion for their Spider-Man. And I think it would also be beneficial if both were set after the events of No Way Home. Just to see how like the events of No Way Home also helped in their character development. And so they can reference can they can reference like the event in uh No Way Home, and but it would, like I don't know I would like to, I would be able to see that last hurrah. That's just me. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. Love you guys. Have a wonderful day. Be kind one another. I will talk to you fellow mutants later. Have a wonderful day. Be kind one another.